AP Bio 3.1 is on enzyme structure. Unit 3 is all about metabolism, which is all of the reactions that happen within an organism. Life itself can kind of be defined as a network of chemical reactions where atoms are rearranged constantly to form new molecules. This requires every organism to have, use, and obtain energy. Metabolism is best understood through pathways where one molecule is altered in a series of steps and results in a different molecule. Catabolic pathways break down molecules and anabolic pathways build them up. So living things rely upon reactions happening where and when they want in order to do anything. This is where enzymes come in. Enzymes are biological catalysts or proteins that speed up reactions in a living thing. Enzymes act upon a substrate. Enzymes shapes and charge are specifically built for one, one substrate. A good example is how lactase enzymes only bind with lactose and thus enable the hydrolysis of lactose. Lactase therefore cannot catalyze any other reaction because the only molecule that has the right shape and charge to bind to it is lactose. Let's get into topic 3.2 on enzyme catalysis. Enzymes are biological catalysts, which means they essentially enable reactions for living things. Biological reactions will happen on their own eventually, but not at the rate or when and where living things specifically need them. Enzymes make it so that their specific substrates require less energy to contort and become something else. In other words, enzymes lower activation energy. And when you're a living thing and you're trying to make sure that you don't expend more energy than you take in, saving energy becomes super important. Substrates bind to an enzyme by its active site, which then enables the substrate or the reactant to become a product. The product then detaches from the enzyme and the enzyme can be used again. Continuing from the last video, lactose binds to the active site of lactase, which lowers the activation energy to subsequently break down or hydrolyze lactose, a disaccharide, into glucose and galactose, which are monosaccharides. AP Bio 3.3 is all about different factors that affect how well enzymes work. First of all, different enzymes have different pH and temperatures at which they work optimally or the most efficiently. Too low or too high of a temperature or pH can drastically change how fast enzymes make reactions happen. For example, enzymes in your stomach, where it's acidic, are not going to function in the intestines where it's more neutral. A higher temperature generally increases reaction rate, but since enzymes are proteins, they can denature or break at temperatures that are too high or pHs that are too low. Increasing concentrations of enzymes and substrates will increase reaction rate up to a point, depending on how much substrate there is for enzymes to bind to. Too much substrate and not enough enzymes will limit how fast reactions happen and vice versa. Inhibitors are molecules that prevent an enzyme from functioning, which is a way to regulate reactions. Competitive inhibitors will block the substrate from binding to the active site of an enzyme, while allosteric inhibitors will bind elsewhere on an enzyme and change the shape of the active site so the substrate can't bind. AP Bio 3.4 is on cellular energy. By now, we hopefully know that living things are dependent upon chemical reactions and that these reactions require living things to take in more energy than they use. Therefore, we have to be efficient with our metabolism, especially because energy cannot be reused or recycled. It just gets converted from one form to the next and passed on or lost as heat. One way to ensure energy is being used efficiently is through energy coupling, where in a metabolic pathway, the net release of energy from one reaction is used to drive another. An exergonic reaction causes one of these releases of energy, while an endergonic reaction is one that requires extra energy to begin, and it absorbs that energy from its surroundings. In a metabolic pathway, one molecule gets converted to a product, which becomes the reactant of another reaction. If an exergonic reaction comes before an endergonic reaction in a pathway, the energy from the first reaction can be used to power the second, which wastes very little energy. This can be found all over the map of metabolism in living things. AP Bio 3.5 is on photosynthesis, which is a huge topic. It's the process by which plants and algae convert sunlight energy into chemical bonds in glucose molecules and also releases oxygen gas into the atmosphere. This process starts with the light dependent reactions where chlorophyll and protein complexes called photosystems located on the thylakoid membranes and chloroplasts use a photon of light to split a water molecule, separating the hydrogen atoms from the oxygen atom. This releases a high energy electron, which is passed along proteins in the thylakoid membrane, setting up a proton gradient to make ATP. That electron absorbs a second photon and that energy is used to make NADPH. The second phase of photosynthesis is the Calvin cycle. This process takes individual carbon dioxide molecules through fixation, then uses enzymes, the energy from ATP, and the reducing power from NADPH to take those carbon dioxide molecules and basically assemble them into glucose, C6H12O6. This is how plants turn light into sugar and power whole ecosystems through this process. 
3.6 is on cellular respiration. Respiration is the process by which cells produce ATP, the cellular energy molecule. All life needs ATP, but not all life has to breathe to get it. Respiration can be aerobic or anaerobic, meaning that a lot of cells can make their ATP without oxygen and even switch back to using oxygen when it becomes available. For all cells, however, phosphorylating ADP into ATP begins with glycolysis, where glucose is broken down into two pyruvate molecules, which subsequently produces these products. For prokaryotes, the process stops here, but if you have the powerhouse and you have some oxygen, pyruvate gets converted into acetyl-CoA and entered into the Krebs cycle. This cycle produces these as a result. The NADH and the FADH2 molecules are electron carriers that initiate the electron transport chain where electrons get passed around to proteins along the inner mitochondrial membrane to produce a proton gradient, which ATP synthase consequently uses to add a phosphate onto ADP to make ATP. Oxygen accepts these electrons and we ended up with over 30 ATP molecules, which makes it super efficient. AP Biology Topic 3.7 is on fitness, and I don't mean making gains at the gym. Another big theme in biology is that variation improves fitness, meaning that the more variety living systems have, the better. This idea is gonna come up a bunch more times in this class. The main thing for today, however, is that the more kinds of molecules that cells have, the better they are at responding to changes in their environment. That, by extension, gives them a greater chance of surviving and reproducing in different environments. A big example is that a wide variety of enzymes enables a wide variety of reactions. Even variations in the same kinds of molecules improves an organism's odds. Different chlorophylls absorb different wavelengths of light. Different phospholipids alter the fluidity of membranes. Different hemoglobins absorb and carry oxygen at different developmental stages. You can find examples like this all over the place throughout biology, and they all highlight the fact that the more molecular variation cells have, the better.